Well, Iran's envoy to the International Atomic Energy Agency has lashed out at the U.S. for postponing a major international conference on banning nuclear arms in the Middle East. Is that the unilateral decision by United States for postpone, um, postponement of this important conference uh, is a serious setback to the NPT and also disregard of unanimous decision which was made in NPT 2010 uh, in New York. Uh, and therefore, we said that uh, there was another also mistake, a historical mistake. In Geneva, recently, we had preparatory committee. Uh, and in that preparatory committee, which was another chance, let's say the last chance, again, Amer uh, Americans and a couple of others were not uh, following the expectation of the countries in the region. Sultania was referring to the conference that was supposed to take place in Finland's capital Helsinki last year. He also said the U.S. and Israel are to blame for creating a deadlock over the issue. Sultania's comments come after a meeting of the IAEA's 35-nation Board of Governors in Vienna. The meeting was meant to find ways to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons. The IAEA criticized several countries for not cooperating fully with the agency. Well, we're going to cross over to Minneapolis. Joining us via Skype is a Professor William Beeman. He's with the University of Minnesota. Professor, many thanks for joining us here uh, on Press TV. Now, looking at the comments made by Ali Asghar Sultani over here, he has called this a historical mistake on the part of uh, the U.S. and its allies. What do you make of that? Well, the United States is really not prepared at this time to uh, to enter into a major conference on uh, nuclear disarmament in the Middle East. Uh, primarily because uh, the you know, uh, primarily because this would call into question the uh, nuclear arms that Israel actually possesses, and this is a very difficult situation for politically for the United States to address. Um, and not only that, but the United States has also been instrumental in providing nuclear technology to certain uh, states in the Persian Gulf. And uh, bringing that into question is also problematic with regard to a comprehensive, uh, a comprehensive conference on nuclear disarmament. Uh, so uh, I would say that the United States is simply not prepared right at this time to, to deal with these issues uh, politically uh, within the United States. And it would uh, be a very difficult situation for them to do that. Right. Now, this does raise the questions over the hypocrisy and double standards of the U.S. On the one hand, as you mentioned, uh, the U.S. is arming Israel with nuclear warheads. Also, it is stonewalling efforts uh, for the uh, evolution of the NPT and its implementation uh, in further conferences. And on the other hand, it has forced numerous countries to abide by the uh, NPT and what it stands for. Uh, where does the U.S. then find the legitimacy to do that? Well, uh, that's a really good question because the uh, the enforcement of the NPT uh, is uh, actually a little bit uh, unclear. We have to find some body that actually is able to enforce the um, enforce the uh, provisions of the treaty. Right now, for example, the United States continues to claim uh, that Iran is in violation of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty when, in fact, it is not. Uh, and uh, during the conference in Vienna. Uh, we had uh, we had General Director uh, Yuka Amano uh, talking about the fact that uh, that there was still a, there were still a lot of things that needed to be resolved with regard to uh, their relationship with Iran, uh, and of course Israel is not a signatory to the uh, to the NPT at all, uh, so uh, anything that Israel does falls completely outside of the bounds of that treaty. Uh, I would I would take exception to the. A statement that the United States is providing nuclear arms to Israel. We don't know that. As far as anyone knows, the uh, Israel, we're, we're, the world is fairly certain that Israel has a large number of nuclear warheads. But as far as anyone knows, uh, that has been developed internally within Israel and has not been supplied by the United States. Right. And um, Professor Beeman, very quickly, if you can, do you think that the International Atomic Energy Agency could be that neutral body, so to speak, in uh, trying to implement the NPT in bringing about a world free of nuclear weapons? Well, the, the, unfortunately, the IAEA, uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency, has become heavily politicized, and largely under pressure from the United States. It was much more neutral under Mohammed al-Baradei.
But under the current administration, it's become very heavily politicized, and they're being called upon to do things uh, with regard to uh, the um, control of and, and inspection of nuclear, uh, of nuclear technology that falls well outside of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Their job uh, really is only to determine, first of all, whether uh, nuclear materials are being used for military purposes, and second, to determine whether there's undeclared nuclear material uh, that exists in any given country. That's all. And so uh, the IAEA has, in its reports, continually referred to uh, technology that, for instance, might possibly be used for making a nuclear weapon or might lead to a nuclear weapon. This is completely outside of their purview. Uh, and so the, uh, their, the uh, actual functioning of the IAEA is really called into question. I'm afraid that uh, they have really, uh, they've really uh, done a, a lot of work which calls their credentials into question. Uh, okay. But uh, we hope that this will be, uh, that this will be resolved. Okay, that was Professor William Beeman with the University of Minnesota joining us via Skype from Minneapolis. Professor Beeman, many thanks indeed for your comments here on Press TV.